Today on Chris Performance Repair, I have a little bone to pick with GM because of their terrible engineering design. They have really screwed up. Uh, it's all the 2014 plus models up to 2021 for sure and into the future. I don't know how long it is because of when I'm posting this video. It is April of 2021 right now. And up until this point, they are still doing the same stupid design. I don't know how many of these vehicles it is going to affect, but I know it is already affecting quite a few. So, what is going on? They have designed the valve train geometry in a way that contradicts, counteracts, doesn't work properly. I don't know how I want to phrase it, but it does not work with the AFM lifters, which means it's going to be even worse in the 2018 Plus models if they're equipped with DFM. So, there are two different designs here. The one is the AFM design, and that's the one that goes from 8-cylinder to 4-cylinder. And then there's the one that has DFM, which is anything from 8-cylinder all the way down to 2-cylinder mode. Now, what is the problem here? So, the problem comes down to the geometry of the valve train. The previous generation in 2014, older than 2014, so non-direct injection motors... Their cylinder heads were designed in a way that the lifter and the cylinder head, this was perfectly lined up with the lifter. The rocker was directly above it. So being directly above it, it did not tip this in any sort of angle, right? And because of that, it didn't have a problem. It worked perfectly fine, except for the oil pump they had would lose, well, it, it maintained volume but the vehicle's engine would lose tolerance and thus the volume couldn't keep up. It would lose oil pressure and then the lifter would collapse and fail and came to my solution with this tool to release the lifters when they collapse and fail. They get stuck in a collapsed position. Here is one of the lifters, right? So you can see on here, oh, I got the locks in place. So there are locks in here. The oil pressure goes into this port, applies pressure to these little locks here, and there's a spring, and that spring, when the oil pressure is applied, collapses and makes these locks that are in here lock the lifter in this groove slot that's in here. Now, the problem with this system is when there's not enough oil pressure and those locks don't engage fast enough for the time even, timing events, it will actually bind and cause a knurling effect inside this lower half of the bore, and then this thing will get stuck like that. That was the reason I designed this tool. The new systems have a little bit different issue. Now they have a variable volume pump in them, so there's a vein mechanism in the pump, and this pump delivers as much oil as necessary to get the proper oil pressure needed per the computer's command. Now, that eliminated a lot of the flaws with this lifter failing. However, they created a new issue because of the valve train geometry like I was just talking about where the rocker position matters. Now the new ones, the old ones were like this, right? The new ones sit offset. I'll show you a picture here of one of the AFM systems, so 2014 to 2017 models with direct injection. This image right here, you can see the push rod is sitting against one side just in its natural, natural state. And then in the collapsed state, so when this thing is down, it's also really close to it. Now, if you watch this, doing this, this part is where the lifter is sitting in, or, or push rod, the push rod is sitting inside this thing or on the top of this thing. And doing this, it goes with it. So when the system is active, I don't believe it's rubbing on here. I think it just stays where it's at. It just sits in a stagnant position and doesn't move, right? Now, sitting in that position and not moving is one thing, okay? That's just whatever. It is what it is. It's not going to cause any wear and not going to cause any issues. So while in the AFM mode, it should theoretically not cause a problem. But of course, that's all in theory. Now, when it's regularly running, here is the major issue with this. As this thing goes up and down, as that, that rocker arm, so when you do a rocker arm, it's tipping like this, right? Well, it naturally does this as it's tipping back and forth. So you can see it's kind of moving the push rod like this. I mean, I'm exaggerating, obviously, 
But what's happening is it goes up and it's against one side, right? So it's rubbing like this across the push rod. And I don't think it hits all the time. I think it's really close to against it and then it just touches it a little bit as it's doing its up and down event. By doing that, you're creating a harmonic shock to the side of this push rod. What happens then is the push rod flexes a little bit and if you get just the right frequency inside the engine, while it's doing that, while the push rod is thinned out and worn, it will bend the push rod. So here is an example of what happens. You can see in this picture here, you have push rods with wear marks, you have the bend in them, and I think because the bend is in the opposite side of the wear mark, or you know, it's it's going against the wear mark. So so it's bent. So if it's bent this way, right, the wear mark is over here. It's not bending it while it's pushing against it. It's actually bending it from the frequency that's in it. Because this is only happening to some of them, I think some of them might have a different lifter where it's not quite rubbing as bad. And the other ones that it's happening to, where it's hitting, it's creating a resonance. So you have a long shaft, it's the, you know, the push rod is typically about that long. And when you hit this edge, it travels like this down the length of the push rod, right? So it'll make it bend a little bit, kind of like when you do the little pen trick. It'll make it bend. Actually, I got an idea. This is just a welding rod for TIG welding, and we're going to use this because it's it's flexible, right? I can bend it pretty easily. So if you hit this right here, you see it's bending it more in this side than it is on this side. Well, what will happen is it'll tap that, and when it lets go of that, this side will counter bend, and that'll be right at the top. So if it's hitting it towards the bottom, and then it starts to go up, and then it lets go as it gets to the top, then it counter bends. And that's when the spring pressure on the valve is at its maximum pressure. So if it's at its maximum pressure, it's got the most likely chance of going whoop, and then it's permanently bent. And I think that's what's happening to these newer engines. Why am I really concerned about the DFM engines? Because they have 16 lifters instead of 8. The AFM lifter had 8 lifters, or the AFM engine had 8 lifters that were AFM lifters. That means 8 of these lifters are touching the push rod. The DFM engine does not appear, as you can see on this image here, to have changed the geometry against the push rod. So, being that's the case with 16 lifters, that's double the amount of lifters, I expect to see more problems in the future with this system. Now, what's the solution to this? Okay, We do have an option for a solution that is hopefully going to be available soon if it's not available already. As soon as I have something available, I will be putting it on my website. CraysPerformanceRepair.com, nice and simple. I'll put a link in the description. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a custom push rod made that will solve this problem. So it's as simple as pull the valve covers off, pull the rockers off, pull the push rods out, put new push rods in, put it back together. So I'm going to have a custom push rod made, and like I said, as soon as it's available, it'll be on my website, crazyperformancerepair.com, and we're going to solve this problem so that it doesn't happen the cheap way, because the only other option to stop this problem is to do a full AFM, DOD, DFM, whatever you want to call it, delete on the system, meaning you replace all the lifters, you replace the camshaft, and you have a tune done to turn the system off. Now, that's rather expensive, heavily labor intensive. If you have to pay somebody to do it, you're looking at bare minimum four grand. I mean, depending on your location. So it's really expensive to do. And if I can sell a set of push rods for one, two, two hundred dollars, whatever it ends up being, once I find out what the cost is, I will go ahead and throw it on there. You'll get a chance to see it there. Um, maybe I'll throw it in the description too, but doing a couple hundred dollars in push rods is chump change compared to doing a full delete. If the vehicle is not broken yet, this is a wise choice to prevent the problem in the future so that you're not going down the road and end up with a random lifter tip. So interesting thought, something that definitely needs to be addressed. I am seeing more and more and hearing more and more about it. I have yet to have one in myself. 
but I have a lot of people saying they're having it happen because of my lifter trick that is well known. Now, why is that happening? This bent push rod situation is an identical symptom to a collapsed lifter. It just does not come from a collapsed lifter. So push rod is in there, right? And you have a collapsed lifter, and this push rod is going to seem shorter, right? Because it's stuck in the collapsed position. So it's this guy being squished down all the time. So it ends up with a gap, and it will knock against the, the rocker. It will make a bunch of noise. It will cause a misfire. It won't work properly. That's the original symptom and the reason for this tool. The new trucks are a little different, though. Instead of having this guy collapse to make the noise, although that's very possible as well. So now you have an additional problem that can happen on the newer ones. Um, you can have the push rod bent. So if you take a push rod and you bend it, you can see the height of it. I'll put it against my chest here so the camera can pick it up. If it's straight, it's that high, right? If you bend it, now it's a little bit lower. So it drops the length of it because... It's taken up in this empty hollow area here, this bend area here. You know, the more I bend it, the shorter it'll get, right? So, obviously that's an extreme, but just to prove a point, you know, it shortens up the push rod, and that will also cause a lift attack, because now your rocker has this slop here, and every time it goes up, it'll go bam, bam, bam against that rocker. The rocker won't move, and you'll have a misfire. Identical symptom, different problem. So if you are trying to diagnose what your issue is, and you pull the, the push rod, check that first. If the push rod's bent, you know what's going on. That's when you head to my website and figure out where you can get these push rods. Hopefully I can come up with them. I'm gonna try my darnest. I wanted to get the video out as soon as possible. So, if you've had this issue, if you're a technician, maybe working on these things and you've seen this problem, go ahead and leave a comment down below let me know your experience. Let me know what you've done. Have you just been replacing them with the same lifters or push rods? Call them the other day, sending the customer on their way. And has have they come back with more in a different cylinder? The same cylinder doing it again? Just curious. I want to find out how this is happening, when this is happening, what is happening too. You know, give me some info down in the, the comments below. With that, like, share, subscribe. And as always, I hope to see you on another video. Thanks for watching. I got a lifter to put some locking paws back in.